Hello, everybody out there. Uh, my name is Chico Vela. I am a partner here at Walker Gates Vela, a law firm dedicated to serving immigrants. We handle all types of immigration cases and also criminal defense cases with the vast majority of our uh, criminal cases involving immigrants. And what we're trying to do when we represent an immigrant in a criminal case is make sure to preserve their ability to live here in the United States, their ability to become a legal permanent resident or to become a U.S. citizen. You know, we don't want to hurt your immigration status. That's always a goal uh, in our criminal defense when we have uh, an immigrant client. Today's topic is DACA and DWI. Uh, so first off, what is DACA and what is DWI? DACA is a program uh, started by President Obama in 2012 that allows uh, children uh, who were brought to the United States uh, at below 15, at, uh, 15 years, when they were 15 years or younger, uh, to apply for uh, a basically a work permit and a social security number if they meet certain criteria. Uh, one of those being that you have to have a high school degree or you have to be working toward uh, a high school degree. And then another one of the important criteria is that you uh, not have certain criminal convictions and one of the criminal convictions that is fatal to DACA holders is a DWI conviction. What is a DWI? Uh, in Texas, it's called a DWI. That's, that's where I am. That's where we are. Driving while intoxicated. Uh, a lot of other states have uh, different names. Driving under the influence. Sometimes they call it a DUI. But basically, it's when you're, you're driving a vehicle, you're operating a vehicle on a public road, and you have either been drinking or you have been using drugs, or it, to the point where your driving is impaired. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of different ways to, to, to do the, 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 the general uh, sense. So now, what happens uh, when you have DACA? You're a DACA holder, you've got your work permit, it's current. And uh, let's say, unfortunately, you're, you're stopped and you've been at a party, you've been at a bar, uh, and you've had a few drinks, and you're arrested for a DWI. So the good thing is, if your DACA is current, immigration should not mess with you after the arrest. It should be a normal arrest where, you know, the, the police will do whatever they need to do, uh, uh, arrest you, and then you should be able to, to get out on bond relatively quickly. If, you're, if your DACA is current, if your DACA is valid, you will not be detained by immigration. They know that it's just an arrest. Immigration, when they review, they're gonna see the arrest. But when they see it, they're gonna say, oh, this person currently has DACA. It was just an arrest. It's not a conviction. We're gonna let it go for now. Uh, but if you are a DACA holder and you eventually get convicted of a DWI, then you're not going to be able to renew your DACA. Uh, and so that's a, a big, big hit, uh, you know, for people that have DACA, you know, they have jobs that ask for the work permits, they require a work permit, your, your driver's license, your, you know, if you're, once your DACA expires, you're not going to be able to, you know, renew your driver's license. Uh, it, it's a big hit. And, and, and for a lot of people, DACA is their only option. You know, they don't have a U.S. citizen wife that can, you know, make them, you know, they can become a legal permanent resident. They don't have U.S. citizen or, or legal permanent resident parents. So for a lot of DACA, the DACA is the only thing giving them legal status here in the United States, and it's just critically important. Uh, so, so before you know, we talk about what what to do and all that. Don't get a DWI. I cannot stress enough: if you are DACA eligible, if you are a DACA holder, take an Uber, take a Lyft, uh, stay at the friend's house that you were drinking at. Do not drink and drive, do not use drugs and drive, that includes pills, even if they're prescribed, even if you have a, a, a prescription for those pills, it, it, you know, if you're, take the pills and you shouldn't be driving, that can still also be a DWI. Just be extra careful uh, with that uh, conviction because people take it very seriously. The uh, police take it very seriously, the district attorney, the prosecutors take it very seriously. And so when you pick up a DWI, it, it, it can be very difficult to fight it, especially when it's one where you have a very a very high blood alcohol content where, you know, it, it's not that you just had one too many beers. You might have had five too many beers or something like that. Those are very difficult cases to fight, uh, you know, as, as, as a criminal defense attorney who fights these cases all the time. You know, the, the worse the DWI is, 
the more difficult it is to beat it. You know, when, when you've got someone that is just horribly drunk and driving, uh, uh, people react very negatively to that because they feel like, you know, you, you're just, you know, but for the grace of God, you know, you didn't kill somebody or you didn't hurt somebody. When there's a DWI and there's an accident, uh, that's another one where, again, you know, the prosecutors, they, they, they really don't want to dismiss those cases. They, they really want to push and get a conviction on those cases. So, so you've got to watch out for that. To avoid a DWI, I cannot stress it enough, avoid a DWI. You have to be extra careful as a DACA with, uh, uh, with, with driving and, and, and drinking and, and all those uh, 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 kinds of things. Um, so once you do get arrested, if you are in that situation, then it is absolutely critical that you hire a good attorney. I'm not talking about, you know, just any attorney. I, you need a good criminal defense attorney that understands what the stakes are, that, that you know, fighting and beating this DWI is, is, is your ticket to be in this country, to, to continue to live in this country. So they need to understand that. Your attorney needs to understand that. And, uh, and, and you need to understand that when you're deciding on what attorney to hire. The other thing is that, you know, one of the first things with my clients when, when they get a DWI, I need to show the prosecutor that even though this person got DWI, it was a mistake. They're good people. And I need my clients, I need you to provide me evidence of that. That means go do your classes. You know, DWI class, they have you know different kind of things that the prosecution will require. The sooner and quicker you get those done and you get those in my hand and I show them to the prosecutor immediately. That's my message to the prosecutor saying, hey, my guy understands he messed up. My guy wants to make it right. Right away, he went out and he did all his classes. He's in, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, if, if that's what, you know, you need to do. He's voluntarily doing community service. He has gone above and beyond to make sure that, that, that he does, that this does not happen again. He wants to demonstrate how seriously he's taking it. Uh, so, so those are the kinds of things immediately that, you know, you as a client, you need to show remorse. Basically, you need to show that, you know, even if you weren't drunk, you know, maybe it, it turns out that, that, that you weren't drunk and you just had a couple of drinks and you were under the limit. Still, you've got to be careful with that. And you've got to show the prosecutors that it was, it was a mistake, that you acknowledge it was a mistake and that, you know, they need to believe that you're not going to do it again. So that said, there is a lot of ways to get a DWI dismissed. Uh, a lot of places have something called a pretrial diversion programs. Um, pretrial diversion programs are when you know you apply, you they'll usually put a uh, an ignition interlock device, which is one of those big machines they stick it on your on your uh, 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 steering wheel, and you have to blow into it um, so the car will start. Uh, or they'll they have other devices that you can use if if you know you don't have a car anymore after a DWI. Uh, and so you're, you're going to be monitored for your alcohol consumption. You're probably going to have to do some counseling. You're probably going to have to do some community service, pay a fine, do some classes. But after you do all those, uh, after you, if you get into that, a, a DWI a pretrial diversion program and you complete everything, they'll dismiss a DWI at the end of the program. Those are great programs. I, I've used them a lot, uh, for, for my clients. Um, and, uh, and, and just make sure that you hire a good de defense attorney that, that knows about that kind of stuff. And, uh, it, it's going to make sure to take advantage of those kinds of opportunities. There are other ways also to, to, to beat a D DWI. Um, and ultimately though, if for whatever reason, the prosecution, uh, the, the district attorney does not want to dismiss it. They just refuse to budge on anything, no matter what you give them, no matter what you tell them. I mean, then ultimately you have to be prepared to go to trial and try to beat it to trial. Uh, it, it's, it's, no one wants to do that. It's hard. It's hard for the client. It's hard for the attorney, but it's that serious. If you are a DACA holder and you get a DWI, you have to be willing to fight that case all the way through and, and, and just fight it with every bit that you have and get an attorney that's also willing to do that. Um, you know, when you set a case for trial, who knows what's gonna happen. Sometimes the witnesses don't show up. Sometimes the police officer's not available. And at the last minute, you'll get a good offer. The prosecution will say, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll give you this instead of a DWI, or we'll give you that instead of a DWI. And, and that might be good enough to where, you know, as a DACA, you know, uh, we can take that deal and preserve your, your DACA status. But, you know, again, you just have to be willing to hang in there and fight it. And you have to have an attorney that's willing to hang in there and fight it too. So um, 
Once again, I'm uh, Chito Vela with uh, Walk for Gates Vela here in uh, Austin, Texas. We also have an uh, office in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and we serve the entire central uh, Texas area, Waco, uh, you know, Williamson County, San Marcos, Bastrop. We have been all over central and south Texas. Uh, and uh, please, you know, uh, like our video um, and, and our, our, our page. We're always trying to kind of provide informative uh, uh, videos, especially about, you know, immigration and criminal defense issues. And, uh, and we're here, um, please call us to make an appointment if, if you have any questions about immigration or call about a, a criminal case if, if you need a criminal defense, whether you're an immigrant or not. Um, and good luck out there, be careful. We're all uh, hoping that, uh, that the DACA soon become legal permanent residents. Make sure and, and, and let people know about that. You know, the, tell your, your, your congressman, tell you know, your people that, that, that you know, you will, you're a dreamer. You know, you, you were brought here and, and, and this is your country and you're not going anywhere and, and, and you want to be part of this country, not just with a work permit and social security number, but as, as a lifetime resident, as a citizen, as someone who belongs in this country forever and ever. That's what we want to make sure happens to all our DACAs and, um, and just take care out there. Uh, thank you all very much, and uh, thank you so much for listening to the video, and let us know if you have any questions. Bye.